Fox Sports 1340 back again, this time for some IWFL action as the Baltimore Nighthawks took on the Philadelphia Firebirds. I'm here with Ty Rice. You know who I am, Brian H. Waters. Ty, what did you think about that game? You had four quarters of exciting football. You had everything. You had late hits. You had big touchdowns. You had crucial fumbles. This was everything that a Saturday football game should have been. Ladies and gentlemen, we had an opportunity to catch up with Shea Fitzgerald, the star running back, along with the owner of the team, and Ty had an opportunity to do his first interview. Get, let's get, take us to that footage. I am here with Shea Fitzgerald, one of the most iconic running backs in the IWFL. How you feeling today, Shay? I feel great after that lovely win. My feet hurt, though. <laughs> well, I saw earlier you lay out. Yeah, not one, but a couple stiff arms out there. How did that feel, you know, having their hands, their faces in your hands and just moving out the way as you was on your way to glory? Um, it lets me know that all my time spent in the gym is definitely paying off. So I work out a lot to do those lovely stiff arms and break free and run people over. And whew, All right, I'm about to break out in the shout. <laughs> She's about to break out and shout, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how would you sum up this season? Huh. This season definitely didn't go as well as I thought it would have based off of the potential from the athletes that came out in the beginning of the season. But as a whole, this is the first team that I probably played with, maybe the second team, second season that I played with a team that was built on camaraderie. So no matter if we won or lost, everybody went home. We were all smiling. We were still a team at the end of the day. Nobody's arguing. And that's, that's the best thing. So win, lose, or draw, as long as the team stays together and we know that we are a team, we'll come back, try it again the next time. You talk about being on camaraderie, talking about being a unit. How do you believe that that will help you next year? And where do you see this team going next year? Um, next year, if everybody comes back and we put in – the same amount of work that we put in plus more next season and not go backwards, I think where I saw us going this season will definitely be there next season. Um, right now we're working with a lot of people who don't have that football knowledge. So building off of eight games this season, they've gotten all the kinks out the way. They can come back and build off of that. And we should have a, a successful season next year. All right, let's talk about you. Um, because right now you're saying everything about the team. But, well, you you know, we just honored a legend, Muhammad Ali. Um, and he was somebody, while he was humble, he loved himself. So I wanted you to take the chance to love yourself. How do you feel you have grown and made a name for yourself in this league? Um, so I started playing football in 2003. I started out as an offensive lineman. I was a lot heavier, but I've always had the speed. And I joined the military back in 2006. When I came back, my tackle actually kicked me off the line and said, no, you're playing in the backfield. So from there, I, I started off. It was a brand new position. I never had a running back coach. I'm self-taught. Um, so every year, this is my third year as a running back. And every year, I've, I've noticed myself growing. Now I'm able to see the holes. I'm able to not only get the stiff arm, I'm able to cut back. And just based off of what I've taught myself, and taking some of the coaches' input. Um, this year, clearly, I don't, I don't like talking about myself, but clearly I, it, it has definitely paid off. I have the most rushing yards in the league, so it's paid off. It's got to pay off for something now. <laughs> All right, well, last, but how has that helped you with the your offensive line? Being that you played that position, how has that helped you with uh, getting them ready? Um, my coach tells me, mm, keep my mouth shut, so I honor that and let him coach. But I try to at least encourage the players if they're doing something good, because a lot of times they don't know if they're doing something good. So I let them know that if I just scored a touchdown, it's not because I did it, you guys did it. So you, you guys are doing a good job. If I see that they're struggling, making blocks and all that stuff, if I know where the person's coming from, I'll step up and I'll say something during the game. Well, my coach isn't watching. <laughs> well, like I said, certainly you made a name for yourself. As I was telling you earlier, um, my friends at My W Sports, they already declared you as one of the savages in this league. So you're doing a great job. Last, <laughs> last where can people find you? Uh, Do you want them to find you on Twitter? Um, <laughs> goodbye, coach. Um, I think 
Um, Instagram, my name is Mac Truck, M A C Truck, or poet underscore tech. Facebook, it is Shay Fitzgerald. You'll see my jersey. I think I'm probably doing a stiff arm. Um, and Twitter, I'll send you guys the name because I don't know my Twitter name. <laughs> Mac Truck, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Shay. Thank you for your time. Great season. Thank you. We're here with Crystal Cornish of the Baltimore Nighthawks. Crystal, tell us about how you felt about that late hit. So the late hit, I didn't expect it, but um, it was great just to run the ball. I'm glad Coach Mark gave me the ball so I could run. I just wanted to be the bus like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Third six, the bus. Tell us how you're feeling about your overall season this year. So this was my first season playing with the Nighthawks. Um, I truly enjoyed it. I enjoyed the family perspective. I wouldn't play for another group of ladies probably again in my life, except for the Nighthawks. So I truly did enjoy it. I played defense 90% of the season until the last two games of the season where I played the offensive line. So I just really enjoyed it though. So it sounds like you guys have a really nice, nice family here. Um, is there anything else you want to say about your team? I just want to say that we are the Baltimore Nighthawks. And if you are interested in playing for the best group of ladies in Baltimore, in the DMV area, come out to the Baltimore Nighthawks. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the owner and CEO, Ms. Tanya Bryan. Ms. Bryan, how are you feeling today? I feel great. It was a great win. The Baltimore Nighthawks, you ladies are making a name for yourself um, in the IWFL and in the city of Baltimore. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good. I think it's important for women to have an opportunity to play football. Um, I also think it's great for people in the area to have another sport that they can come and watch. I mean, it's good family entertainment, and it's a you know it's an alternative to going to the movies or doing something else. And you know, we had great weather for it today, even though it was a little bit hot. When did you decide to get involved in women's football? Uh, 2007. I actually started the team in 07. Uh, 2008 was our first season, so this just uh, wrapped up our ninth season. All right, and where do you see this team going? Um, Obviously, you just beat the Firebirds, a dominating victory. Where do you see, how does that uh, take you into next season? It's always good to end with a win. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll retain the bulk of the team, uh, which really helps. We had a lot of rookies this year, uh, so this is definitely something that we can build on. Um, it makes everybody feel good about how the season wrapped up. So we'll just uh, try to build on that in the off season and see if we can't double in size. And we talked to Shea Fitzgerald, uh, league lead in Russia, and she was telling about the camaraderie of this team. How does that make you feel as an owner and CEO? That makes me feel great. I mean, there's truly a sisterhood this year. Um, it's great to see the players just having each other's back. And I always talk about, don't just have my back, have my front too, right? So if something's coming, I'm going to get there first. Uh, so when things happen and, you know, in their lives, they're there for each other. And it's not just about, I'm going to see you on game day and that's it. I mean, they really care and it really is a family. And last but not least, where can everyone get more familiar with the Baltimore Nighthawks? Uh, there's a couple different places. They can check us out on our website, uh, www.baltimorenighthawks.com, or on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, uh, B Nighthawks, and also on Instagram. So we're all the social media spots, we're there. Thank you, Ms. Bryan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Camaraderie and unity, Ty. As you can see, while this might not have been the most successful season for the Baltimore Nighthawks, they ended off on a high note. What does ending off on a high note with a win in football, what does that mean to you? I think they pulled it off to become a successful family. I think that was their goal, to become better as one, to make their mistakes as one, to get through their injuries as one. And I think they pulled that off good. They've shown that they have still they still have room for growth, and they will get there. All right, you said they will get there. So are you excited about next season? I'm definitely excited about next season. There was definitely some good football played today. It definitely leaves you wanting more. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. It leaves you wanting more until next season. We will still have your coverage at Fox Sports 1340, where you can follow us at 1340 AM Fox Sports, Twitter, Instagram. And guess what? When you're on the website, go to our Amazon, make a purchase, support the station. Until then, he's Ty Rice. I'm Brian H. Waters. So long, everybody.